Hey guys, welcome to week 16. Congratulations on making it to the last week of class. Congratulations on surviving the Civil War and the Reconstruction era that came after. Um, I hope you have enjoyed your time in the class thus far, and I hope that this last week um, proves sort of a successful conclusion to your learning experience. So really with this presentation, um, there's just a couple of announcements, nothing of really tremendous significance. Um, and then just a little bit of information about the Unit 3 exam. Okay, so as far as announcements go, I guess they have nothing uh, really too significant going on. Um, if anybody needs to meet with me this week, just let me know. Um, I'm happy I'm going to be on campus a lot, um, catching up on grading. Um, and so I, you'll be able to find me in my office probably uh, without an appointment, but if you have a specific time that you're available and you'd like to meet to discuss anything, uh, then please feel free to be in touch and we can arrange something. Um, a change from the syllabus, as I've noted numerous times, is that the Unit 3 exam and the Learning Summary are going to be due on the 8th of December, which is this Saturday, I believe, rather than our usual Sunday night deadline, just because the turnaround for grades on my end is so quick. I have to have final grades um, uh, by 5 p.m. on Monday to the university, or to the college, sorry. So, so I need Sunday and Monday uh, to make sure I've got um, my grading ready to go. Um, there is some further um, instructions and presentation than what is in the syllabus. There is information in the syllabus about the learning summary but just a little bit extra to go along with that. In the week 16 uh, content folder, there's instructions. And then as soon as I get done with this presentation, I'll turn around and record just a little something about the learning summary, just to offer some examples, maybe to give you guys a little bit more uh, insight into expectations there. Okay, so that's really it for announcements. And then let me just switch on over to a little bit about the exam. So it's a shorter, exam period so I, I sort of made up for that instead of having one or instead of having three extended response questions we're just going to have one and instead of it being each one worth five points the one is just going to be worth 10 points uh, so there'll be 15 matching 12 multiple choice one true false at one point and 10 location identifications also at one point um, you're welcome to use your study guides, any previous quizzes, any of your own notes, um, and also any notes that uh, you, you make from the Jeopardy style, Jeopardy style uh, game uh, that's available now in the week 16 folder. Uh, just make sure you're not engaging in any collaboration with outside sources, with other students, uh, with other people generally or really just any academic dishonesty of any kind. Uh, the best policy is just to rely on, on the course material itself, not going out into other websites and other sources at all to, to look for help with this. Um, a few of the location identifications. Um, remember uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi, there's, like I said, there's, the list is, is here. And I think we've hit on most of them as far as, I know they've been included, but whether or not they've been included in the map, I think they have been in maps throughout each week. Um, so that Mississippi, that's important. Know the location of the Mississippi. Know, I think we've already been tested on New Orleans. Uh, Vicksburg there, just kind of a uh, straight shot up the Mississippi from New Orleans. Um, the Oregon Trail, you need to be able to identify the state that the Oregon Trail went to um, and uh, potentially, you know, have a rough idea of, of the trail itself. Um, some of the things to do with the Civil War, uh, Gettysburg is a big one, just like Vicksburg. These are two of the most significant battles of the Civil War. The Vicksburg, I include it because it often gets overlooked in relation to significant battles of the Civil War, but it was huge, huge control of the Mississippi uh, was granted uh, via the victory of Vicksburg. Very big deal, cut off 
uh, the South from getting food supplies, right, from the agricultural West, uh, part of the Anaconda Plan, a key part of the Anaconda Plan. Um, so, uh, in it, like I say, in addition to that, Gettysburg, uh, up there in Pennsylvania, a lot of people get confused and think Gettysburg was in the South, in Virginia or something. No, nope, it was fought in the North, Northern state. Okay, and then extended response questions. So you'll have the option to respond to one of these three questions. Instead of being three to five sentences, because we're just looking at one question, uh, it's gonna be the, the length requirement is at least eight sentences. Um, so discuss the contributing factors that led to the American Civil War in the short term. So we're looking in the, like, in the years and months immediately preceding the Civil War. We're not looking at sort of long-term things, but what, what events, what issues, or issues as manifested in particular events um, occurred in the in years immediately before the Civil War that really just accelerated those longer term um, sort of trends in American history, because I'm sure some of you guys have been able to see, if not everybody's been able to see, this was sort of something that has been coming has been in development um, really from the Constitutional Convention um, and sort of the, the, the three-fifths compromise and some of these things that relate to, to slaves and, and Africans in America. Okay, so then discuss the significant features of Reconstruction in relation to civil rights. So um, Reconstruction as it affected uh, amendments, as it affected um, basically the rights of individuals. Um, and that, that's just sort of to focus that question in a different way than the, the third question discuss the consequences of the Civil War. So this is more in a general sense, whereas number two is sort of focused in a little bit more specifically on civil rights. Uh, here again, I'm looking for information directly from the material that we looked at in class. So if you're going to outside sources and you're drawing in these sort of random arguments that some somebody puts up on their blog or something, that's not going to carry very much weight. Um, the sources that have been included in our class have been vetted by me uh, for accuracy. Um, and so that's what I'm looking for. So I really do not encourage you sort of like Googling these questions. I, I encourage you instead to look through um, the reading materials and the videos and sort of put your thoughts together in terms of the material that's presented there. Uh, remember also to do your best to use college level writing um, and also make sure your college level writing is also, it's about grammar and punctuation and spelling, but also about evidence-based writing. So you provide some evidence for your statements rather than just making the statement. You have to provide some support um, and th that support should come in the form of specific evidence. Okay, so then as far as what's upcoming, that's up to you guys, how you want to enjoy your freedom, <laughs> the holidays, and, um, and all that comes with your, your break between semesters. I hope that, like I say, you have a successful last week of class, and it, and it sets you up for uh, an enjoyable uh, sort of reprieve from schoolwork and a nice change of pace. I've enjoyed working with all of you guys. Um, I look forward to having any future contact with you and at CEI with any classes or anything, uh, if I can ever be any assistance with um, letters of recommendation or advice, whatever you might have in mind, then please uh, let me know. I'm always happy to help uh, students, current and former. So I wish you the best, good luck on the test and, and good luck in life. Bye guys. <laughs>